Hey guys, this is Rick. I hope you're having a great day. I've been asked by quite a few people uh, over the past sort of couple of months whether I can put together a video that goes over all of the components of the telescope and all the equipment that I'm using in order to do astrophotography, but also to show you sort of how everything's connected up and uh, what I do to sort of make it all work. So I'm going to be doing that in this video. So this is the current telescope setup that I'm using. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over each individual component with you right now and talk you through it. OK, so we can start off with the actual telescope itself. OK, now this is the Explore Scientific AR152 6 inch F6.5 air spaced doublet achromatic refracting telescope with a focal length of 988 millimeters. Now the mount is called the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro and it now has the extension tube. One of the issues I was having was the bottom of the telescope was actually banging against the legs. So with the extension tube I was able to eliminate that issue. It uses a sync scan go-to system. Now the camera that I'm using is the Canon EOS 1300D. This has also been astro modified. It's actually had the red filter, internal filter removed. And that means that when you take photographs of nebula, uh, the reds uh, come through a lot uh, easier. It's also using a twin battery pack. And what I find is two batteries is sufficient for a whole night's worth of astrophotography. I attached the camera to the telescope using this two inch T adapter, which simply sits on the front part of the camera like so and then this just bolts straight onto the telescope so there's a direct connection. Now on here I use something called a Bada Semi APO filter. Now one of the problems with the doublet achromatic refracting telescopes is you get something called chromatic aberration and the Semi APO filter helps with that. Chromatic aberration is where your stars tend to bloat with a purple fringe um, and that's quite noticeable using this particular telescope but the filter does seem to uh, take care of some of that not all of it but it certainly helps now that's quite a lot of wiring going on there but it's actually a lot simpler than it looks and it's just a case of connecting them up one by one uh, so that you get them in the right order Everything is connected to the computer, uh, which drives the telescope, sending it to where you want it to go, and also controls the camera that will be mounted on the back of the telescope where that eyepiece is at the moment. So to start with, we have the sync scan controller. Uh, this has two wires going to it. One of them plugs into a, a little RS-232 interface uh, which then goes off into a USB lead. Hopefully you can see that. A uh, USB lead here, uh, which then goes straight to the computer. So it's USB controlled. The other wire, that goes off to the mount and goes into the socket labeled hand controller. Now, power to the mount is fed via a 12 volt cable uh, that plugs straight into the mount and then that goes off into socket that leads there's another extension socket there and that goes to a transformer which I've got here uh, a mains power transformer uh, which essentially turns 240 volts into 12 volts um, and straight into that socket there. Next up is the guide scope. This is an Orion Starshoot auto guider uh, which I bought second hand off of eBay and it's attached to a 50 millimeter finder scope um, which this feeds uh, again two wires. You've got one USB wire that goes directly to the computer into a USB port and you've got this um, it's almost like a telephone lead type wire and that goes directly into the HEQ5 Pro mount there. 
Now finally we've got the controller for the camera. Once the camera goes on to the telescope, I can't, I can't put the camera on the telescope until I've set the telescope up and I can't do that until the North Star appears. But once the camera is on the back of there, it will be connected to the computer via a basic USB port, as you can see in the center of the screen there. Now, the software I use to drive the camera is called Backyard EOS. And I've actually got it connected to the computer right now. Uh, there's the uh, USB lead in the side of the camera. The camera's on. And all I need to do, let me just expand this. Hopefully you can see it okay. See if I zoom in a little bit for you. Um, so what I do with Backyard EOS is I uh, hit the connect button up here. And this is a Canon Digic 5 or 6 camera. And there we go, it's now connected to the camera. And this here is the big view screen. And down the side here, you tell the camera exactly what you want it to do. Let me zoom in. So for example, I can tell the camera that I want it on bulb setting, a duration of however many seconds I type in there. So let's just do an example. I'll do a, a four second shot. And then I can also alter the ISO. I can go right from 100 to 6400. So um, if I'm taking a, just a snapshot um, of the sky just to see what's going on, then I'll generally use a, a high ISO like a 3200. Um, but then when I'm actually taking a proper photograph, uh, I will bring the ISO down because the higher the ISO, the more grain you're going to get in the picture, the more grainy it's going to be. It's like using a faster film. Um, but the slower the ISO, uh, the, more, the, the, the greater quality of the film uh, or of the picture, but you need a much bigger or much longer exposure um, in order to get the same level of light. But what I'll do, uh, just for an example, I'm going to use a 3200 ISO, a duration of four seconds on bulb setting, and this tells me the number of exposures. So I can do that twice, three times, a hundred times, however many I want. So I'm going to do it just for example, let's, let's make it two seconds, and I'm going to do two exposures. And I'll, I'll zoom out and I'll show you the camera so you can hear the camera as well. Um, so uh, if I click start capture, which is this button down here, you'll hear the camera click. Ready? There we go. Two seconds, it's counting. And it'll take another one. It's downloading that to the image. There we go. So it's just done exactly what I asked it to do, which was two exposures on the bulb setting for a duration of two seconds uh, on an ISO 3200. And each picture it takes, it feeds using the USB lead, uh, it feeds the picture it takes to the screen. Um, and then it also stores it uh, in your, um, in your, I think it's in your pictures um, files. So yeah, it's a really good bit of software and I completely recommend it um, for sort of anybody first starting out. Now there is other software available um, that I'm being told about but for now I found this very very user friendly and to me that's important. Now the only downside with um, Backyard EOS uh, is that it's not free and um, you can use it on trial for a month and it's fully functional for a month um, and uh, it gives you a you know, good opportunity to make sure it's definitely what you want um, and then after a month it'll shut down and you have to go and buy a license. Now, for the guide scope, I use something called PHD2. I do believe the PHD stands for push here, dummy. Uh, now, essentially, the, the guiding software, all it does is it locks onto a star, um, you know, a reasonably bright star, and it will send little micro adjustments to the EQ mount um, so that that star, star doesn't sort of um, cause star trails. It just kind of it's like a, keeps it locked on while you're taking your photographs. But that's what I'm using. It's the very latest version of PHD2. And I do believe this is free software. Now, to operate the actual telescope itself, I use a, another free program called Stellarium. And I've just uh, I've got it up here, and uh, at the moment it's just showing um, a, f a big field because obviously it's daylight. Uh, when it gets dark um, in real life, uh, this gets dark and stars start to appear. So at the moment it's put. Oh, there it is! There it is! See that little crosshair uh, on the screen? That's where my telescope is pointing right now. 
Uh, hopefully you can see that right there. Um, so if I let me zoom. I'm using the scroll wheel on the mouse to zoom in and out. I can actually. I'm pretty sure I can get rid of. There we go. There we go. I've turned off the atmosphere. And so at the moment, Rick's HEQ5 is just kind of pointing. It's sort of roughly in the area of the North Star. So it's pointing there. Let me just make sure. Let me just select somewhere nearby. If I press Control One, there we go. The telescope's moving. So let me do that one more time. I'll just find another star, let's say M71. Press Control 1 and off it goes and it starts looking for M71 and it tracks in on the screen. Where are we? There it is. It's tracking in as it's moving and that's the target I set it. And then it sits there. And at the moment it's pretty uh, low to the ground. If I want something overhead, uh, I can do that. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit and let's get something like uh, let's go for Arcturus up overhead. Obviously, you can't see anything at the moment because the sun's shining. But if I press Control 1, hopefully the scope will slew and it should go up. Now, it does have this built in feature where it can't just keep continuing sort of around and around it, it will only go so far and then if you want to go further it'll actually go all the way around the other way um, and I think that's a built-in intentional thing so that the leads don't all get tangled up so there we go that was just my quick little video on all the equipment I use and how I connect it all up um, if you want to know anything more specific do feel free to let me know in the notes below and if I need to make another video I will um, I may do a video on the uh, setting up of the uh, the polar alignment although I'm still I'm still kind of learning about that uh, it's still a little bit hit and miss for me so I'm not sure I'm qualified to sort of um, create a how-to video on that um, but we'll see but if there's anything else specifically you want to know uh, do let me know and if I can help I will so that's it for this video thanks for watching guys I hope it was useful to you and uh, I will see you in another video till then take care